Hey guys, it's Chris the Copyright IT Guy here. And today, I wanted to make a little video on how to set up your printer or copier on the network to print. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to set a static IP in the machine. Static IPs are important, especially for your network printer or copier, because DNS will renew the address every now and then, and you might lose functionalities such as printing especially if we want to set up scanning to SMTP. So in this video, we will have to do, like I mentioned before, about printing out a uh, status page, or in most cases, what's called a network configuration page. And we'll need to find the IP address that the machine has acquired automatically through DNS. So you can hear my machine here printing out a configuration page. So we can find the IP address that it pulled by DNS. Okay. So our machine has an IP address of 192.168.157, which is the same as last time. So in this case, so in this case, we'll need to access advanced functions of the machine. So we will have to log in with the admin username and password. So, okay, we'll go here to where it says network settings. I know these menus will be different among different machines, but they're mostly found in the same areas. So we can turn off the DHCP and the auto IP. We don't need that. So the next step, we'll want to open up our command prompt. And the most important thing you want to do is try to set the IP address of the machine kind of out of the range of DHCP, not too high, not too low. Because you don't want it to interfere with something that DNS might... Because you don't want it to interfere with something that DHCP might give it the same address. And we'll have printing and other functions that won't work. So... Let's try pinging an address. Let's see, 192, 1600, 100, 100. Let's see if anything's on 200. Sometimes the modems, for instance, Comcast modems, will be 1.200. So I just wanted to check that. So nothing is on 200. We could set our machine to 200 if we wanted to, but seeing as um, I'm on a small network here, and there isn't any other machines that will even get near this 157. The 157 should be fine. So, looks like we already have some of our basic information here. I'll open up a uh, command prompt again. IP config. Yeah, so this is all matching. So, another important part we're going to want is the DNS server. DNS server settings is very important for setting up SMTP if you want to scan by email. So in order to find your DNS server settings, just type in ipconfig space front slash all. And here's our DNS server, 254. So we'll enter that in here. And the secondary isn't very important, but I'll just put in the Google. There you go. And then you make sure you scroll down, hit submit. And that was just reminding us that we need to restart the machine for these settings to take a, um, effect. So let's click reset here, take us to the reset menu. We don't need to reset the whole device, just the network side of it. And yeah, menus and stuff are going to be different amongst different machines. You will have to power some off and on. But um, because of uh, our dem demo machine here is a Kyocera, these are the basic functions that this machine has. So yeah, we might have to wait a little bit for the network to restart. Remember guys, if you have any questions or anything, or you have a machine you're working with that you don't know how, I have many years of experience doing this. 100% sure I probably run into your situation. So let me know in the comments. 
even try dropping me subscribe and let me know if you'd like to see me make a video on something. But alright, let's check our TCPIP settings and yeah, everything's set here. So that was easy. Also want to bring out that there is some other settings here, such as in the management area. We could do notification reports, where the machine will email you, you know, meter counts and all that stuff, and also the remote services. And this is where you would enter in information for KFS, Kyocera Fleet Services. What that does is it keeps a good track on the machine's usage and uh, toner levels. Usually dealers will use this information here. I haven't set it up for myself. I don't know what the end user sees in the software, but yeah, this is where you would find that. You would just click on, hit submit, and then it'll bring you to another menu where you can enter in their PIN number. So yeah guys, that'll do it for this video here today. Remember, I can always help you remotely if you need it. And if you do have any questions or you are a technician and you'd like to know how to set up a certain machine or something, just let me know in the comments. I just want to say thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.